The stress history of soil is a critical concept that plays a significant role in understanding the behavior of soil under various conditions. It refers to the record of stresses that a particular soil deposit has experienced over time, including both natural and man-induced stresses. Understanding the stress history is very important because it can significantly influence the soil's physical properties such as its shear strength, compressibility and permeability. These properties in turn can impact the design, stability and performance of foundations, embankment, retaining structures and other geotechnical constructions. This stress history is often quantified using the concept of overconsolidation ratio OCR which compares the maximum pass stress on the soil called preconsolidation stress to the current effective stress soils can be classified as normally consolidated or overconsolidated based on their stress history and OCR we have discussed these in our previous video in this video we will continue our analysis of the data obtained from the consolidometer test, part of which we have already discussed in our previous video. We will focus on understanding the behavior of soil by examining the void ratio and effective stress curve, which depicts the stress history of our soil sample. In consolidometer test, we loaded a soil sample in steps and then unloaded it in the same way. We plotted the curve between void ratio and effective stress on log scale. For our soil sample that has never been subjected to any compressive loads in its history, we obtained a straight line by loading it for the first time. This line is known as the virgin compression curve. In this part of the curve, soil is in normally consolidated state, as the current effective stress is the maximum that it has ever experienced. Let's denote this compression curve as AB. We did not plot the portion of the curve when the soil was unloaded. So when the sample reaches the equilibrium under the final load at point P, which represents the maximum stress applied during the test, we remove the load from the sample and allow it to swell under unloaded conditions. After allowing the soil sample to swell and measuring the corresponding void ratio and effective stress, a curve is obtained that is concave upwards. This part of the curve is known as the rebound curve or swelling curve. It's important to note that soil sample could not fully recover its original state and void ratio that was at the beginning of the test. This signifies that some amount of permanent settlement has occurred in soil due to loading. The portion of the deformation that is recovered after unloading is attributed to the elastic recovery of the soil structure. Let's mark the final point on the rebound curve as C. Now if we reload the soil sample that has swelled to point C, this process creates a new curve. And as we increase the load, the curvature of the curve reverses direction. As the load approaches maximum load that was experienced by the sample at point B, the curve merges with the original compression curve AB at point D. This new curve has concavity downward and is called recompression curve. However, we observe that a reloaded specimen has a slightly lower void ratio at point D than it did at point B during the initial compression for the same load. When further load is applied to the sample, 
the curve merges smoothly into the straight line and continues as an extension of the first loading curve AB. An interesting thing we can observe from this experiment is that a plot of void ratio versus logarithm of effective stress is always a straight line for a normally consolidated clay. However, for over consolidated clays, the plot almost always exhibit a convex curvature upward. This pattern has been confirmed by lots of experiments conducted on different soil samples. We should also note that sometimes over consolidated soil is also called pre consolidated soil. Now, there are too many similar terms in this concept. Please understand them carefully and don't get confused. We should notice that the curve we drew started with a straight line, but in reality, it begins with a flatter initial portion that transitions into the steeper virgin compression curve. This flatter portion also represents the recompression curve. This is because no matter how careful we are, taking a soil sample from the field inevitably introduces some disturbance to the soil structure. Also this flatter portion in the curve may be introduced because the soil may have experienced some degree of stress in its geological history, even if it has not been subjected to any significant man-made loads. In our previous video, we defined the slope of the linear portion of the curve as compression index of soil. Similarly, we can also define few more coefficients for the unloading and reloading portion of the curve. We can define expansion index or swelling index CE as the slope of the rebound curve as this. Since we can notice the change in void ratio during swelling is smaller when we compare the change in void ratio during compression for the same load change, it is evident that swelling index is much smaller than compression index. This makes sense as we know that void ratio does not fully recover to its original value during swelling that it experiences during compression under the same amount of pressure. Also, we can define a recompression index as the slope of the recompression curve which is obtained when the soil is reloaded after it has been loaded and unloaded. By looking at the graph, we can also say a recompression index is much smaller than the compression index. There is a method, a graphical method, to find out the maximum load that a soil has previously been subjected to called pre-consolidation stress. That we may discuss in our next video. Support elementary engineering on Patreon and get access to the questions that I have solved related to this and other topics. Also your support will help me continue creating more such valuable content. You can find the links of the books and other sources I referred for the creation of this video in the description. Read Stress History of Soil at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com Thank you.